Hello, I'm Tim Gray, and in this video, you're going to learn how you can apply some simple adjustments to take an image from this to this. The difference might seem relatively subtle, but the impact can be significant. What we're seeing here is some distortion in the image. So here's my original image, which is an HDR capture, a sequence of images of different exposures assembled here in Aurora HDR into an HDR result. And of course, I can process that HDR image, applying tone mapping and various adjustments. So I've corrected the color, I've fine-tuned the overall tonality, but you might be able to see that there's a bit of distortion here. Part of that was caused by the lens itself, a bit of barrel versus pin cushion distortion, for example. Some of it was my own perspective, the position from which I was photographing. And so we have some lines that should be vertical that aren't exactly vertical, and just a little bit of overall distortion in the image. Fortunately, in Aurora HDR, it is very easy to solve for these problems, both lens corrections as well as transformations. To get started, at the top of the right panel, I'm first going to choose my Lens Correction option. And here you'll see that we have several sliders that allow us to correct for the overall behavior of the lens, essentially some image quality issues that might have been introduced by the lens that was used. For this image, I certainly want to apply a little bit of distortion correction. Notice that as I hover over the slider, I get a grid view on my image so that I can better evaluate the right setting to use. And if I drag toward the left, you'll see the image bulges outward. And if I drag toward the right to a positive value, the image pinches inward just a little bit. In this case, I just need a little bit of a positive value to correct for that barrel distortion in the lens. That looks to be much better. Again, referencing the grid on the image as I'm applying that adjustment so that I can find just the right setting. For this particular image, fortunately, the lens that I was using did not cause any fringing or chromatic aberrations. If I saw color fringing along the edge of the image, I'll go ahead and zoom in, in fact, so that we can get a closer look at the image, and you'll see there's no color fringing. I could create color fringing if I wanted to by adjusting the value for defringe or for remove CA or chromatic aberration. You can see that that causes color fringing. Of course, if that color fringing actually existed, I could adjust the slider value for both defringe and remove CA in order to actually remove that color fringing. Fortunately, though, in this case, I can reset those values to zero as there was no apparent fringing in this image. I'll resize to fit the screen once again, and we'll see the effect of the D vignette. We can compensate for light fall off at the corners, the edges of the image, brightening up those edges. In this case, there may have been just a tiny bit of vignetting at the edges, but I don't think it's significant enough in this case to worry about. So I'll just leave that D vignette slider at its default value of zero. So for this image with the lens that was used, I don't need most of these lens correction adjustments, but that distortion slider certainly provides an improvement for the photo. Now I can move on to more of the geometric transformations for the image. So I'll go ahead and choose the transform adjustment controls. And here you see we have a variety of additional sliders that allow us to warp and bend the shape of the photo to get things lined up better. I'll start off with the vertical correction. And this essentially allows me to lean the photo away from me or toward me in order to apply a correction based on my perspective. And for this scene, a negative value is necessary, essentially leaning the buildings toward me just a little bit. Again, notice the grid line that I can reference here on the image. That looks to be pretty good for that vertical transformation. The horizontal transformation is very similar, just operating horizontally, essentially rotating that image around just a little bit. And for this photo, I think things lined up pretty well, but I'd like a little bit of a positive value for that horizontal transformation. You can probably tell pretty easily that my horizon wasn't straight. It's especially evident from the building here, the bell tower, where we have the tower leaning to the left rather obviously. I think what happened in this case is that I was referencing this little bright area of the image, and so I set that to be straight, and it wasn't really straight. It was maybe going downhill. 
but I do have some obvious lines. Not a real obvious horizon necessarily in this case, but the lines of the building certainly look to be a little bit askew. And so I'll go to my rotation control and I can drag to the right to rotate right and drag to the left to rotate left. In this case, I need a moderately strong rotation to the right. It looks like a value of right about 27 will do the trick there. Once again, referencing that grid line, trying to make sure that I have everything lined up absolutely perfectly for the image. Now, I've applied a fair bit of transformation to this image, and it's distorted the image a little bit, so much so that I think the aspect ratio has essentially gotten to be a little bit off. The aspect ratio slider allows me to stretch the image or squish the image to essentially correct for the height of objects in the scene. If I applied some relatively strong transformation adjustments, I might need to correct for the overall aspect ratio of the scene. In this case, I think I need to shorten the image just a little bit. A negative value of around about 16, it looks like, will give me what I recall to be an accurate aspect ratio. That, of course, is perhaps the most challenging aspect of aspect ratio, is trying to remember how tall the objects actually looked in the scene so that you can find the correct setting. So that has done a pretty good job of squaring up my image, of straightening things out. Naturally, I'm going to need to crop this image later in my workflow. You might have noticed I have some dust spots I'm going to need to clean up, some other work. But as part of that process, I will certainly want to crop, but notice that I'm missing some of the top portion of the image. And that's where the scale as well as the offset controls can help. I'll start off by reducing the value for scale, essentially zooming out on the image, and then we start to get a much better sense of just how much transformation was necessary in order to improve this photo. I don't need to zoom out quite that far, but I do want to reduce the value for scale so that when I crop later, I'll have more information available, more of the image available, so I can choose exactly how to crop. I can then shift my offset values. And so, for example, in this case, if I drag that slider for X offset to the left, the image moves over toward the right, and if I drag to the right, the image moves to the left. So I'll use a positive value in this case, right about there seems to be a good value so that I can see more of the image. And then, of course, the Y offset for that vertical movement, and in this case, wanting to use a negative value to pull more of that image into view. Right about there it looks to be pretty good. So that will work well, both in terms of the correction for perspective and those lens issues for this image, as well as fine-tuning the scale and offset values so that when I crop this image, I'll have more of the actual image to work with. But as you can see, it is quite easy to solve for a variety of lens and perspective issues with your HDR captures in Aurora HDR.